this week. Casey and Cyrus are on location in Melbourne, Australia for AFC4. See all the highlights, interviews, and an explosive main event of the week. All this in a classic Dirty Dozen on MMA Inside the Cage. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage on our big AFC4 recap show. Of course, we made it all the way down here to Melbourne, Australia, the Melbourne Pavilion, where they absolutely threw down a big heavyweight co-main event and main event, which we're going to get to here in just a second. I'm here next to the one and only Crocodile Oxen9, Casey Oxen9. I'm Cyrus Fees. Let's talk about this fantastic show. Man, let me tell you, first of all, you're calling it Melbourne. We've been here a long time. I am Crocodile Oxendine. I know how to talk the legal. It's oh, Melbourne. Melbourne. You know, and it's no worries, mate. No worries, mate. No worries, mate. And, but, yeah, we're here. We're having a great time. AFC 4 was such a big extravaganza, man. Tons of action. Of course, you saw So of the Hulk Pulele. You saw the big main event. It, it was incredible, and, and it really delivered. No doubt about it. And I'll tell you what, we're right here at the Melbourne Zoo. It is historic. It is the oldest zoo in Australia, one of the most amazing zoos in the world, period. We're going to go check out that, check out all the animals in the cages, and then we're going to talk about those animals that were in the ring last night at AFC 4. And we are here at the Melbourne Zoo. We're actually at the monkey enclosure, and we have some real quick, agile animals jumping all over the trees, having a good time. Kind of reminds me of the way we got started here with AFC4. You had the featherweight matchups, Regan Neo taking on Zach Hook from Dominance MMA. Zach Hook, he gets in that position with the rear naked choke. Regan, he really persevered. He made it through there and then was able to get on top for rounds two and three, score the unanimous decision victory. Excellent fight. It was. And then we moved on to Keenan Palliser taking on Anthony Fogus. Two jiu-jitsu guys, of course, Palliser, the more long and Lanky Focus, the more traditional style jiu-jitsu guy. But, you know, uh, Focus, uh, sort of interesting, at the end of round one, tried to lock up that triangle choke, the TP style he triangle did, yeah. choke that was a little bit different. But, you know, Focus persevering, and he takes it home. No doubt about it. We're going to move on here in the zoo, and we'll get through some more of these fights. Then we moved on to our next fights of the night, which, I mean, all these fights were very impressive. But let's talk about Jackbone Shan taking on Dean Purden. You know, Shan did make an incredibly beautiful fight and almost came back. And uh, that big flurry at the end of round three almost secured it, but not quite enough. That's right. Dean Purden was very impressive. Just like these Tigers, man. These Tigers are powerful. These guys were powerful as well. You move on to your next fight. It was Mikey Vatua, David Gibb. Well, you have to look at Vatua and think, man, this guy has it in the bag. But, man, Gibb, he really, really controlled on the ground and on the feet and was able to stop the much, much larger and imposing Vatua. That's right. And then you talk about Vic the Spartan Gruja, a guy that has a huge pedigree right now. He was on a roll. He's been everywhere fighting. He takes on Zine Saliba. Well, you know, the Spartan did what he had to do. He, he attempted those guillotine chokes, yeah. like three attempts, unable to pull those off. And unfortunately, when, when you do attack that guillotine, you give up that guard position. It's very difficult to take it on the scorecard. And we're right here at the kangaroo enclosure here. we got a few emus over there. And uh, we're going to talk about the judokas taking on the MMA guys. And these are two fights that you and I talked about on the show that we were so excited to see. First, Daniel Kelly taking on Fabio Galeb. I think this one is the most interesting. This is the biggest underdog of the night on BetEasy.com. But just like these kangaroos over here, we saw those guys boxing, and we saw them leap. Leap right over the Right top. over the ropes. Yeah. yeah and, uh, definitely an incredible fight. Um, you, you know, a, a few fouls in there. You know, uh, Galeb seemed to be the more seasoned of the two. Uh, of course, um, Daniel Kelly, he, he was one of those guys who, who was a, a pedigreed judoka, but, you know, very, very new to the MMA world, uh, did what he had to do to win, though. With those two fouls, he takes home the unanimous decision victory and uh, a huge win in his hometown of Melbourne. I was very impressive. I like you in Melbourne. Very, that, was, that was good, Casey. That was good. You really worked that in there. Then you talk about Callum Lewis taking on Evo Sosanto. I'm a huge fan of Callum Lewis. I said that going in. He is very well-rounded, wiry, squirrely, has a, extremely good guard, and he showed case it just really couldn't pull it off on uh, Evo DeSantos who had an extremely good core good takedowns secured the top position I really would have liked to have seen the referee stand this up a little bit more and then we moved to one of the biggest matchups, one of the biggest hyped matchups on this card, which was your guy, the Diesel Donnie Lester, taking on the Chief Peter Graham. We're right here on top of this elephant right here, Casey, because these guys were big. They have a lot of power. Let's talk about this fight. Obviously, it didn't go the way you wanted it to go, being his coach, but it was exciting, and the crowd loved it. You know, they were massive, massive individuals, and, you know, Donnie did give it his all. He came out, he, he put in a, a huge camp, and, and he was the huge underdog, and it was, it was the opportunity of a lifetime, and he did make the best 
best of it. And man, he is ready to come back with a vengeance right here in the United States whenever we get back. But you know, great fight and props to Peter Graham. The guy is a gentleman, a tough fighter and, and a world class athlete. No doubt about it. And I even talked to Donnie. He says, you know, he wants to fight Peter Graham again. It's a pride thing for him. He wants another shot. It's probably going to take a few more fights to get back up to Peter Graham. But there's no doubt in my mind with a head full of steam, Donnie Lester can make it happen. Well, you know, and that's the thing, too. You know, Peter Graham, in his first five outings in his MMA career, he lost. He lost his first five. He has come back since. He is 6-0 and in his last six outings. You know, and, and that's that's where it's at, man. You know, if you stumble a little bit in this sport, all you got to do is get back up on that elephant and do what you got to do. That's right. And we're going to move on to our main event, but we got to take it to the lion's den. And then, of course, we got to our main event of AFC4. This is the one that everybody was talking about, Casey. You have the heavyweight champion and so with the Hulk Paleli, very much like these lions that we're about to take a good look at. This guy is amazing, taking on the big talking, big man from the USA, Sean McCorkle. Let's talk about how this fight went. And uh, it wasn't very long, but it, it was a lot of hype and a lot of fun. Well, you know, Soa did establish himself as the king of the jungle here in Australia. Man, going out there, getting a huge takedown, a huge slam that reverberated across that arena arena and then from there landed those big strikes for that stop. Now McCorkle did try to get the Camaro. He tried to, to write that submission, but he just couldn't quite do it. And Soa had really good defense and just he landed some big blows. Well, Soa, he said that going in, man, he was going to watch out for that Camaro because he knew that McCorkle was good at that move. No doubt about it. And Sean McCorkle was very disappointed. And he said that in his post fight interview with you, Casey, uh, disappointed he couldn't give the Australian fans a better fight. And hopefully we'll see him back here at the AFC because I think Australia and Melbourne really liked big, sexy Sean McCorkle. Well, they certainly did. And, you know, a loss to Soa Pulele is not the end of, t of your career. I mean, that, that is a incredible fight. It, it, you know, to go up there and, and put it all on the line against a guy who is a former UFC competitor himself. Hey, it was a great main event and a great show. Do we see Soa Pulele in the UFC very soon? 2013, what do you think? I, we'll find out, man. He is definitely campaigning for it and it's a fight I would like to see I, I would at so Pulele a gentleman and, and a great asset to any promotion in the world that big slam and you got on top was that your plan from the get-go not really uh, I just wanted to avoid his uh his key lock his, his, you know because he's he's pretty dangerous I mean he's got like a lot of his wins are like from submission so um, I, I think if, you know if I kind of punched him and ma made him avoid that it would be, be a good thing Let's hear it for your winner, Australia's own Soa the Hulk Pali. We are going to take a look in the next round at some of the interviews and some of the words from some of the big fighters. And later we're going to talk to a pride veteran, a legend of the game, the big cat, Tom Erickson. How appropriate that we're right here at the Lion Park. But right now, your first four finals for Clip of the Week. Good job finally getting out of that clinch. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. 
All right, guys, welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage. We are in Melbourne, Australia, a day after the big AFC4 event here at the Melbourne Pavilion. And Casey, we had a great night, and we're right here at the Pie Face. This place is awesome. Uh, a meat pie, that's what they have here. It's like a little pot pie, but they got beef, they got chicken, they got everything going on. This is a perfect late night treat or a morning treat, however you want to do it. They've got them all over the Melbourne area. And you know, they in there, you've got free Wi Fi, which is uh, hard to come by in this city. The tomato sauce on top of the pies at all times. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's a little bit chilly right now but you know that is the thing about melbourne it is four seasons and one day it is a very unique locale and uh you know just a great thing man. i can't wait to get in there and get me one of those uh, mushroom and chicken oh man so good but i'll tell you what these pies in here are hot and it was really hot in that ring we got some crazy interviews man we have the big cat tom erickson we have sean mccorkle and we got the man so are the hulk Paleli, as well as the afc president adam malinkovic let's take a look at a little piece of some of those interviews right now i'm here with the Big Cat, Tom Erickson. This is an MMA legend. There at the golden era of this sport. You're here with Sean McCorkle getting ready for that big main event against Soa Pulele. You, know, you talk about different fighters. They all have a, a, a specific base set of skills. And, you know, and, and the way that the sport is now, you know, it's two generations from when I fought, but you got to be good in everything. But there's always a base. There's always something you're really, really good at. And Sean doesn't have that. You know, he, if you want to give him his best skill, it's, it's a jujitsu. You know, I'm where, uh, on the ground, and, that, and that's because he's pretty fearless on the ground. I am talking with Sean McCorkle, fresh off the fight at AFC Four against So of the Hulk Pelele. And, uh, you know, you kind of requested this interview. You, you wanted to talk to me about this because uh, you kind of have a lot to say about this. Now, I saw the video. I was there commentating, and it looked like maybe you lost. Uh, you, you took the loss there and uh, by TKO, uh, and kind of want to talk about that. I'm not sure. It must have been on Undisputed. Maybe I was fighting Mark Hunt on Undisputed because I won last night. Um, yeah. There was a, the big slam. I took took him down, and uh, he tangled himself up in the ropes pretty bad. I may have struck him in the back of the head a few times, yeah. um, but nevertheless, the referee didn't call it, and um, mm -hmm. he even has a huge knot on the back of his head, I guess, to prove it. But um, I was just happy to get the win. That's the biggest thing for me, man, you know, um, was to come away with the win because that was a big one for me, biggest name outside the UFC. Yeah, well, that's, that's big, so... Uh, following this win. So uh, congratulations once again. Uh, we saw the victory. It was so quick over Sean McCorkle. Uh, obviously a lot quicker than you expected. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I was expecting a three-rounder. Um, but, um, you know, it's, I'm happy to have them, the, the quick victories and stuff like that, stuff, stuff like that because you, you just get to go home early and and, uh, and pack up early. But, um, you know, you, you train for, for, for eight weeks on just for a, a, a one-minute 45 second fight but you know I mean imagine if I didn't train it'd be it obviously probably be you know maybe went to his his decision so you know Sean's a, a, a tough tough fighter and and um you know uh, all respect to him but um you know it, it was my night and uh yeah it happened the way it is here with the CEO of the AFC Australian Fighting Championship we're talking about Adam Malinkovic man you've got to be so excited and happy right here on the heels of AFC 4 this big main event Sean McCorkle and so with the Hulk Pulele talk about this event um it's a, well, pretty much the calm after the storm uh it's a, it was a big event in general um the whole card from i think uh, the first fight to the um to the main event has just been uh, was jam-packed full of action uh, the crowd the crowd was absolutely um, fantastic with the um with, with the fights you know it has been a pleasure to be here you have been so uh, hospitable to us uh, a great experience here in melbourne at afc4 it's casey oxendine adam milinkovic right here in melbourne australia we have i can't wait to see it. i've got to go check it out Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Oh, judges, man, had just come over to me and said, oh, my God. He can't believe what he just saw. The judge said his head hurts right now. That's unbelievable. That was... I would agree with you uh, as well, but Randy's got a little... Oh, Ooh, big flying knee. He's out. His arm just popped. That is not a sound you want to hear. Not a sound at all. Not Jeremy Horn, but I'll have to find out when he gets over here. Oh! Oh my goodness! I think for my son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, 
I believe him. You know, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. All right, welcome back to MMA Inside the Cage, third and final round, and we are right here in Melbourne. We have had a fantastic time. It's going to be hard to go back to the States after having so much fun down under. I know you can agree, well, Case. you're looking at a 24-hour plane flight. That's what's <laughs> so hard. It, it, it's no fun. You know, the, the ankles swell up just a little bit, man, but it was worth the journey. No doubt about it. Well, I'm telling you, what we're going to do right here in the third and final round is we're going to leave a lot of room for this main event of the week. This fight was tremendous as we saw Daniel Kelly, a four-time Olympic team qualifier, qualifier taking on Fabio Galeb, a guy that has really fought some top competition over the years. This fight was huge. The fans were behind it. And as you can see, this went, went all three rounds. Casey, how exciting is this fight? Well, his only loss was to Hector Lombard. We're talking about Fabio Galeb. And, you know, going into this fight, Daniel Kelly, he, he was a huge underdog, the biggest underdog of the night, especially we, we, we looked at the odds on that. Yes, uh, that he, he, yeah, he, huge underdog. He comes out, he takes the win by unanimous decision. Huge, huge upset and an excellent fight. This is what it is, a good representation of Australian Fighting Championships. It's your main event of the week. Now, what's the strike like? What's, what's the ground game really like? We know if, he, uh, if uh, Galeb takes anything from his coach, uh, James Tahuna, who's in his corner, then he's going to be very well off. Because a lot can be said about the judoka, the, the power, until you actually feel the power in a lot of these guys, in their hips and in their clinches. You, you just don't know. Ooh, nine. Uh, was that low? Uh, yeah, apparently so. Yeah, you can tell by the reaction. Soros? Oh, yeah. He, oh, oh, nice impressed. left hand. Kelly needs to use that to get that clinch. It's so important. Clinch up yes. against the ropes. Nice side I, kick I, there. I think Kelly is, is, is very tough, and that's surprising to leave. He's not. Oh, nice Uchimata attempt. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Bad spot. That was a hard shot, that Uchimata. That, uh, oh. when you turn, anytime you turn your back, that's great. When you have the gi on, you turn your back like that in an MMA fight, you suffer just like you did earlier in the fight. Here we go, guys. It is round number two. What a, what a Fabio Gleb and Daniel Kelly. Ooh, baby. Things are getting interesting uh, here. He's covering. Oh, Gleb going high, up. going low. Beautiful shot. Daniel Kelly is in serious trouble. He's taking a lot of shots. But Kelly's still how. there, man. Kelly really needs to fight down on that mouthpiece, man, to get your jaw broken in New York. Man. And they're flailing shots, but all it takes is one oh. good shot on the button. Oh, hard shot by Galeeb. If Galeeb would just close the distance. Oh. Opening him up, hit the big body shot, yeah, and open he, him up for a big shot to the head. He may have to take a break as well. Exactly, but, that but tires you out after yeah. a while. But, but I, oh, another low blow. That's going to be a point. I'll tell you what, if it is a point, that could be close. Yeah. Don't have Miss Charlie yet. Oh, oh, hard oh, shot Kelly. by Galeeb. Big left hook by Fabio oh. Galeeb. Oh. Galeeb knowing he has to fight hard to take this round and possibly this fight. What did we just that say? He did not take his time. Take your time. Oh, uh, big, oh, oh hard oh. knee to the oh, head. There's two. Another body shot. Big shots. This and is bad for round. Kelly. Bad oh, position. Whoa. Kelly needs to push through. When he gets, when he oh, 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 hard shot. Can he capitalize? Oh, they are right above us. <laughs> Does he have the wow. wherewithal hard to capitalize? Hard shot the Here we go. If he grabs that rope, Casey, that's going to be trouble. Right. He's, he's taking a dive oh. over the ropes, baby. He's taking a dive out of the ropes. That could be a disqualification. This that was intentional. Uh, wow. Yeah, but he's taking those big shots. Those those kicks are landing. The up kicks and the kicks. That, oh, oh, that there we go, man! Wow, to his knee. Drop to his that knee. Was, that was oh, another oh. point. That was smart by Daniel Kelly. Yeah. Drop to his knee. This one is going to go to the scorecards, guys. Crowd is going absolutely oh, wow. berserk here, big guys. Shot. Wow! What a fight! Going to the judges' scorecard. Greg Lynchens had a 28-27. Paul Basterville had a 29-26, and Albert Shen had a 28-27. Yo, winner! Red corner, Daniel Kelly!
Tony Inside the Cage, presented by Elevation Training Mask. All right, it's time to wrap it up here from Melbourne and Melbourne. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it right, I'm finally. It right. I'm finally getting it right. It has been tremendous. Right now, let's check out our last four finalists for Clip of the Week. To really move his legs apart so wide, uh, so comfortably. Yeah, Mark Jones is corner screaming at him to get up. Oh! Oh! He caught him with the it! Very good job of getting out of oh, good job. Sideways, turning sideways, steps through with the lead leg and lands it. Is, uh, the winner of this fight may be facing the New York Bat. Oh, and look oh. what, and that is Martin Rambo, just like we've seen from him in the past. Now let's check them out all, one by one. We're talking about a dirty dozen, right here from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Good job finally getting out of that clinch. he goes and that is it i can't wait to see it. i'm gonna have to go check it out oh, 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 my God. well but randy's got a little oh big flying knee he's out he's showing a lot of heart yeah. oh his arm just popped not jeremy horn but i'll have to find out when he gets over there Yeah, Mark Jones is corner screaming at him to get out. Oh! Oh! He caught him with the up kick! Oh! For getting out of him. Oh! Good. Sideways, turning sideways, steps through with the lead leg and lands it. Maybe facing the New York Bat. Oh! And look! Oh! And that is Martin Rambo! And there it is. All you have to do is go to MMAinsidetheCageTV.com and cast your vote to win that big package from Training Mask, Gamma Labs, BAMP Fight Gear, and Hunter MMA. As you can see, it is going crazy here in Melbourne, so we got to get out of here. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and go to our exclusive YouTube for exclusive interviews, full interviews from Australia. I'm Cyrus Fees. I'm Casey Oxendown. And we'll see you next week Inside, Inside the Cage. The cage.